All right. Uh, I will be brief. Uh, good morning. Uh, this is a fantastic facility to, to hold our media days. I'm really excited uh, about getting the 2024 season started. Um, but I'd be remiss if I didn't start uh, with a few thank yous. I, I truly believe that players and coaches uh, win games uh, and administrations win championships. And uh, one of the reasons we took this job a year and a half ago is because we believe uh, that we have a championship administration and President Volnick, Brian White, our athletic director, Mary Gardena, our uh, uh, senior women's uh, administrator. Uh, we've got a championship administration at, at FAU. Uh, our Board of Regents, our Board of Trustees, excuse me, uh, does a phenomenal job. And then I'd like to thank Mike Oresco uh, for his time serving this conference. As Tim said, uh, I, this is my second time around in this conference. Uh, the faces are a little bit different, but the, the general theme, the general uh, positivity uh, the fact that the American Conference is positioned in the landscape of college football where it's positioned right now, I, I think, speaks to the leadership of this conference uh, and what they've been able to do uh, from a leadership standpoint uh, throughout this ever-changing climate. Uh, and then thank Tim Pernetti uh, for taking this challenge on. Uh, Tim, thank you. Uh, you you're doing a Phenomenal job early in your tenure. Uh, we, we spoke at, at length last night with the, the head football coaches, and uh, I'm, as a guy that's pretty invested in this conference, I, I'm, I'm excited about its future um, under your leadership, and I'm just excited to see where this season as well as uh, the next few years go uh, for this conference. Uh, with that, I am extremely excited to talk to you uh, a little bit about the FAU Owls in, in 2024. Questions? All right, as we come around to get your questions, Coach, can you tell us about the two gentlemen that uh, came with you for, here to uh, media? Who's day? asking? That was me to your left. To my left? That was me. Oh, your way. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I, I would love to uh, they're, because they're, they're both marry your daughter kind of guys. Um, they are absolutely everything uh, you want in a football player, and I'm speaking of Federico Marenghez, our uh, multi-year starting center and, and captain, uh, and our starting middle linebacker in Jackson Ambush. Uh, these are guys that um, are the epitome of selflessness, the epitome uh, of leadership, the epitome uh, of just hard work and, and, and having a mission and believing in the process in order to achieve that mission and, and going out every single day and going to work and, and giving your team and your teammates your best. And uh, again, I know one of them's got a girlfriend. I, I do have a daughter too, so um, I've been trying. Uh, but the, these guys are, they're unbelievable representatives for what college athletics is. Federico is not just the, the student athlete of the year for FAU football. He's the student athlete of the year uh, for the entire athletics department at Florida Atlantic University. Student athlete, meaning grades, community service, the whole, the whole total package. He's the best we got at FAU. Um, and that's saying something. And Jackson Ambush is nipping at his heels probably for that same award. So uh, I can't say enough about them, their leadership, their buy-in. Um, and watching them grow this, this last year and a half has been really fun. All right, first question from the media will be right there in the front to your right. Hey, Coach. So with the uh, offense taking in a lot of new pieces this offseason, do you feel like the defense is going to be able to kind of anchor, be the team's kind of anchor, I guess you could say, uh, because the, obviously you have Jackson returning, Jarrett, Dez, uh, D-line, a little bit of changes, as well, but overall still a lot of continuity on the defense. Do you think it can be the anchor for the offense, or do you think it'll be balanced? No, I, I, I do. Yeah, we're, it's going to – we're going to be, as a whole – more talented on offense. Um, I, I think the dynamism of our running back room was, was on display in, in the spring. Uh, the quarterback room has two very, very capable uh, guys, one that's uh, started and won games uh, at a very high level. Uh, the receiver room is one that will certainly be deeper, not nearly as, as top-heavy, though, with the 
you know, two of my last three years as a head coach, uh, we've had the leading receiver in the country with Devin Duvernay in, in 2019 as well. And when you lose a guy like LeJonte, you know, you're not going to replace him with one guy, uh, more than likely. And so, but we feel a lot better about the depth in that room and the, the ability to spread the ball around. And then uh, I think the key on that side of the ball, uh, again, we're, we're going to be more talented up front, but experience is, is going to be lacking a little bit there up front. So we need to gel very quickly there. But your question was more specifically about the defense. I went to the same school as Trent Dilfer in terms of uh, question answering. Uh, but the defense, it anchored us last year. I, I, I would argue that we, we played good enough defense to win a lot of those games that we didn't. Uh, I think we held seven of our eight conference opponents to under their uh, season average in points and yards. So uh, we, we played pretty good defense last year. Losing Evan Anderson will hurt. Uh, that's a, uh, as good a nose guard as an impactful of a nose guard. Uh, as I've been around, again, probably not going to fill his shoes with one guy. Uh, might be a, a couple guys there, but to ultimately answer your question, really excited about the defense. I think we can continue to improve. I think we're going to replace the pieces that we lost, maybe other than Evan, uh, with better pieces. Uh, and then offensively, we, we've got to come along as, as quickly as possible. Other questions for Coach? Right here in the front don't, of the left. Don't make me go Biff Pogey. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Jarvis from CBS Sports. How are you doing, Coach? Uh, I'm curious, you know, a year into the job, I mean, what's kind of been ex what you expected and what sort of been uh, challenges that maybe you didn't anticipate? Well, I, I think, you know, not going to a bowl game for the first time in your career uh, as a head coach it gave me a lot of time to think. I didn't, I didn't realize you had that much time <laughs> Christmas break. Um, and I think, you know, a couple things. One, we, we, we were last year's team. I shouldn't say we. Last year's team was one in five in one score games. So we had the requisite talent to be in those games. We just didn't have quite enough to, to be the difference, right? And I'm, I'm talking about a on the road at Illinois after getting your butts kicked by Clemson and you know it's a six point game in the fourth quarter and uh, then you you go to the other side and you say we had a culture good enough to keep us in those games and you know those games that maybe we shouldn't have been in because of the talent um, but just not quite enough to, to carry us over the top so I feel like we've improved the talent we've improved the culture and and what i've learned in my time here is that we made the right decision you know when deciding to get back into to college football um you know the job needed to check two boxes my family needed to be happy living there uh and you needed to be able to win championships and the first box has absolutely been checked boca raton is I had no idea, and my, my family has, has absolutely fallen in love uh, with, with living there. And then winning championships, I do believe we can. We, we do have an uphill battle. We don't have the money yet uh, that some of the established teams that in the American uh, have had because of the, the TV revenue and the discrepancy uh, with that payout every year uh, to our six schools. So we're fighting, but... The good news is uh, we've got a great athletic director that understands what it takes uh, to be successful at this level, uh, understands that switching conferences last year was a major step up uh, and that the commitment level now needs to take a major step up. So I, I think as far as the right people understand the right things, um, so to go back we made the right decision is probably the thing i learned is that we're we're on our way um to becoming i think what what we all envisioned uh this being any last questions for coach up right there in the front on the right uh, Coach, so we saw in the off season you promoted uh, Jeff Love and Ryan Beard to new positions. Um, can you kind of talk about your philosophy of promoting within a little bit, and do you think that uh, it trickles to the team aspect of it as well for the players that decided not to hit the transfer portal? Yeah, I think, you know, one, 
when you, we promoted Michael Sabini from uh, analyst to, to full-time uh, edge coach as well, you know, so we've done a lot of promo. I, I take a ton of pride in the coaches that, you know, you've got Rashad Samples and Brian Carrington, Kenny Guyton's up at Wisconsin, you guys that played for me, GA'd for me, uh, that we've, we've helped uh, move along in their career. And, and I take a lot of pride in that. And what better way, especially at Florida Atlantic, we're, we're not going to pay millions of dollars um, to our director of player personnel or general manager for football or what, whatever uh, the support staff. They love titles. You know that, right? So I, I, I can hardly even keep them straight. But uh, I do know that when you find good people, especially at a place like FAU, that make my job easier, just a, a, a skosh, um, and that really have an ability to impact whether you win championships or not, you want to reward those people and keep them around your program for as long as you can. And so uh, you're right. I hope, it, I hope our players do see that um, in our program you get rewarded. Um, you do the right thing, you do your job, and really, really good things happen. You may not get patted on the back a whole lot along the way, um, but at the end of the day, you do your job, and the, the rewards will come. Last one here in the front to the left. Yeah, Tom, a uh, follow-up question. So um, what are kind of your thoughts on Army coming into the league? You know, obviously there's been one option team here before, but uh, what kind of challenge is that, and how does that help the league, do you think? Well, I, I'm, my defensive coordinator, Rock Bellantoni, will get mad at me, but I'm excited about it. I, I don't know that he's real excited about it. Uh, defending the, the triple option, uh, you know, twice in conference play is, is going to be a difficult task for, you know, I know playing Navy, uh, you know, the, the stat back when they were really had it rolling, you know, teams were like 2-20 and 20 or something, you know, the week after they played Navy. Uh, so it's going to be a challenge, but we're excited. I, I think, it, again, it speaks to the leadership of this conference when the college athletic world, is, as we know it, is blowing up. You know, the Americans just said, hey, you six, come here. Oh, Army, you're independent. You're looking for a home. Okay, we got you. You know, they were very calm, very measured, very calculated uh, in terms of the, the leadership of, of this conference. And to be able to now have two of the service academies in uh, and to be able to play. I know Coach Munkin does a phenomenal job, has for years there. And what a storied program. You're talking about Heisman trophies and national champions and the, the whole nine. And so um, extremely excited. I wish we didn't have to play in week two. I wish we could get them like week eight or nine. But um, so we could kind of figure out what what was going on, but uh, excited to see them come to Boca Raton. I, I, I know it's, it's our first conference game. I would assume it'd be their very first American conference game as well. Thank you, Coach. All right, guys. Go Owls.